In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deal with logins and passwords in simulations. I was looking at the analytics of my YouTube channel and I noticed that well over 80% of you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, which to me is just sort of amazing because you think if you're interested in Adobe Captivate and e-learning, my channel makes sense. It would be the channel that you'd want to subscribe to. And best of all, it's absolutely free. And I really appreciate if you consider doing it because you'd be doing me a huge favor. So recently, one of the viewers on my YouTube channel asked about dealing with logins and passwords in software simulation. And I thought I would cover that topic. There's a couple of things that you can, you can do with that and, uh, and it makes it uh, obviously simulate as close to the software as you can get. It's never 100% perfect, but uh, I think you'll agree that these steps will make the whole login and password uh, experience as close as possible to what the students that you're teaching experience. Let's take a look. Okay, one of the things that I like to do with software simulation is I start off, uh, if it's a web application, I start off with my web browser here. And if I know my target resolution is, let's say the default resolution in Adobe Captivate, which is 1366 by 768, I open a tab in my browser and go to howbigismybrowser.com. We'll just resize this so we get to 768 right there. And 1366, so we'll bring that across till we get to 1366. And what this does is it makes sure that you're going to have a software simulation that fits the default size of your project. And if there's stretching or adjusting that needs to be done, it won't distort the image that you see here. So I can return back to the login page that is going to be part of this software simulation here. I don't actually have an account, so I'm going to be putting in just whatever username that is applicable, and I will type in a fake password. And we'll just capture those two steps. That's all we're going to focus on. So back in Adobe Captivate, we're going to select New Simulation. And this is going to open up my record window here. And there's a few things that I want to set. So again, because I'm doing a web application, I'm going to select application window. Now, if this wasn't a web application, maybe this was a, a actual application, you know, maybe I'm teaching someone about Chrome. I could select Chrome and then I could choose one of the default sizes. Like for example, I could choose 1440 by 1080. And if I did select that, I'm not going to do that right now, but if I did, application would automatically resize to that. And that'd be perfect for capturing an application that's actually installed on your computer. Now, in this case, we're doing a web application. So all I really want to capture is Google Chrome minus the navigation controls, minus the URL, minus the tabs across the top. So I would select select app region. And then I can just click on the view that we're seeing here. And in this case here, I'd like to turn off automatic panning because what happens with that, if my mouse travels outside of the viewport of this browser, the capture window will come with it and that will screw everything up. So I like to turn that off. In this case here, I'm only going to be recording a training simulation. I don't need a demo or an assessment, uh, but you could certainly do all three at, at once if you wish. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to press the record key. I'll get my usual countdown, three, two, one. No stress at all. I mean, the, a lot of people, oh no, now I've got to perform these steps. I like to have the steps that my subject matter expert and perhaps my stakeholder has approved, just written on a piece of paper or maybe on my second monitor, so I can make sure that I'm performing those steps exactly as they're described in policy and procedure document, whatever it might be. So let's start with the username, and I'm just going to make one up here. 
I'm going to say my username is Paul Wilson. And uh, that gets captured. You'll hear the typing text sound. You, you'll hear uh, the, the, the camera click sound to know that you're capturing a screen capture. And now I'm going to click on password. And my password is going to be P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. And of course, it's being hidden to the student here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on sign in. Obviously, that's an incorrect um, address, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to press the end key. And that has captured my slides into a very simple training session here, which you can see on your screen. So let's minimize this for a second. I'm going to go ahead and close my browser and we'll bring Captivate up here. So there's my click box. It's capturing that I want to click on the email or username. So I like to just update this and say select. And it doesn't always capture this, but you can type that in or username. And what I like to do is highlight the object that I'm referring to on screen, make it bold. So it really stands out here. And you can resize this. And I tend to like to place this near where I'm asking them to perform whatever steps there. It looks like I've got an extra space there, but that's okay. Okay, this looks good. And we could go so far as to add narration, but it's not necessary in this case here. So now we want them to type in their username here. Now, if I select this text input field, I can do a few things to adjust it. So if you need to make it change its appearance in some way, you can maybe start off by looking at the different design options, whatever makes most sense here. Um, I think in this case here, probably the default is fine. Let's go back to that. Now the input type is text. I can edit this and we can add additional correct answers. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, under normal circumstances, these fields are blank. So one of the things that you might want to do is under the text, under appearance, unselect the placeholder text. So that will clear it out for you. You won't see the placeholder text there. And we can adjust a few things and just make sure that we have something that's appropriately sized here. Let's go to shape here. I'm going to get rid of the border. And something that's kind of unusual that we've been seeing lately uh, with 12.6, and perhaps it was earlier, is that the background seems to go all the way and covers other stuff here. But the good news is, is that that should not show up uh, unless you, uh, you know, resize this here. So I'm happy with that. This is where my input field is. It is going to be stored in a variable. I tend to unselect case sensitivity because I don't want someone to get screwed up by the fact that maybe there's a capital P and a capital W in Paul Wilson. You know, let them type whatever they wish there. Now, on this slide, there's no instructions, so I'd like to add instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And my instructions will be to enter the username Paul Wilson. And we'll just take the Paul Wilson part and we'll make that bold. Again, I like to move this uh, close to where I'm asking them to perform these steps. And I think that's suitable for this situation here. Now, let's go to the next slide. We want them to click on the password field. So let's, let's uh, put our instructions to say something like to that effect here. We'll say click on or select the password field. And again, we can highlight the word password and make it bold so it's clearly that's what we're asking them to do. And maybe below it would be a good spot there. So they're going to click there. And now they have the opportunity to enter text. So let's do a few things that we would do to make this look uh, appropriate here. So we're going to get rid of the border. We don't want the border. Solid fill is fine because that will clear out anything that's in the background there. We don't want the placeholder text, so we're going to turn that off. And let's resize this so that it fits within the screenshot. 
It's kind of a weird thing going on below. Just ignore that. That's not going to be a huge concern for you. And uh, it all looks good. Now, the one thing that you want to do, right? The answer we're looking for is the word password. But we want it to look like we're entering a password. So you see this input type here? Select password. And, uh, you know, again, you can still add other answers here. We'll type in password and hit save. And I think we're good to go. And you could adjust your fonts so that they're close to what's happening on your screen there. Okay. At this point here, we want them to click this box here. And that's sign in. So click on the, let's call it a button. Click on the sign in button right? So we'll select that and we'll make it bold and select sign button bold. There we go. And we'll just position that here. And our click box obviously needs to cover the entire sign in. I know the click box looks blue and has the word click box on it, but the learners won't see that when you're running your simulation there. And obviously, we're getting to this incorrect uh, email here. But if you had a screenshot that was a better choice, like if we wanted to show a different screenshot, we could actually take this screenshot, download that background image. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. And we can pretend like we've logged into our account here and replace this image with that other screenshot. So it just looks a little bit more normal, you know. And then of course, maybe on this slide here, we can make this a little bit transparent, maybe a lot more transparent. And we can add our instructions where we simply say, congratulations, you have successfully logged into your account. Press the exit button to leave this course. Right, that's fine. Let's highlight the exit button. I know it doesn't exist yet, but we'll, we'll put that in place. And we can maybe put this over top of our login and password, or maybe center this somewhere here. And uh, if we click on the slide itself, we can add a button to this slide here. It's going to go in the bottom right hand corner, but uh, I'm going to select the default button there and we'll just type in the word exit. And our action for that can be where is it here? Exit course done. So let's uh, take a look at this and see how it works. Okay, so I'm going to select the email or username text box there. I'm going to type in like so. And now we'll go to password. And I could adjust that a little bit there. And my password, of course, because I chose password as the input type for this field, it replaces the word password, which is what I just typed in. Uh, with just the dots so that it's hiding my password and comes a lot more closely, uh, you know, related to what they would experience in the real application. And then we can click on the sign in button and then congratulations, you've successfully logged into your account. Press the exit button to leave this course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.